Hello everybody, today I'd like to talk about whether micropayments are the right solution for publishers. Now, micropayment options have been around for a long time, and they seem to be the idea that won't catch fire, but also won't go away. But nowadays, I think publishers are taking a second look because uh, ad revenue is declining and subscription revenue isn't always making up the difference. So, are micropayments some sort of Hail Mary desperation move, or do they fit into the logic of the paid content ecosystem? That's what we're going to discuss. Now, advocates of micropayments will say that readers will only subscribe to a couple brands, but are willing to pay for content from many more. To put it another way, lovers buy subscriptions, daters want micropayments. Right now, publishers tend to have some mix of three options. The, the more common is free access supported by advertising. The second is access to content after registration. And the third is access to content after a subscription. Now, giving readers the ability to purchase single articles creates a new revenue stream for the publisher and a new way for readers to connect with the brand. Now, honestly, I don't like saying that. Generally speaking, I'm a big skeptic of this connect with the brand business. More often than not, that's just a marketing delusion. I have zero brand loyalty to the shoes I wear, for example. I'm, I'm not even sure what brand they are. But in terms of publishing, think of it this way. First, think in terms of source. There are sources that the reader trusts and sources that the reader does not trust. We can break down the sources the reader trusts into two subcategories. The smaller category is sources the reader is willing to subscribe to the larger category is sources the reader trusts and might consider paying for but won't subscribe to. Now second, think of this in terms of types of content. There's content the reader will pay for and content the reader will never pay for, the chief reason probably being because they know they can find it free elsewhere. Once again, we can break down the content the reader would be willing to pay for into content the reader would subscribe to and content the reader might consider paying for but won't subscribe to. Now, it's obvious where micropayments fit into the scheme as I've described it there. Specifically, sources and content the reader trusts and is willing to pay for but won't subscribe to, or at least won't subscribe to right now. Here's the problem. If this is such an obvious and logical division, as it seems to be, why haven't micropayments caught on? I think there are a few reasons. From the reader's perspective, Number one, any sort of reg wall or paywall is an irritation. Unfortunately, we've trained a generation of readers to expect to get content for free. The micropayment solution would have to be as easy or preferably easier than a reg wall or a paywall to be successful. Number two, from the reader's perspective, nobody wants to set up yet another account with somebody who's gonna spam you forever and ever just to pay a buck to get an article. So the solution would have to be something that uses a payment option that the reader has already created, like Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, something like that. Also, it might be a good idea to be able to sweeten the deal, to have a method for the person who signs up to give, get a couple articles free, either from the publisher or maybe from a sponsor. Now, on the publisher side, number one, it seems like a lot of work. Somebody has to pick which articles are for sale, set prices, assign SKUs, and then report on all of that. And the question becomes, is it really worth the effort for what we're going to get out of it? So an effective micropayment strategy would have to make that process very simple and fit into the publisher's existing data scheme. Number two on the publisher side, the publisher might believe that micropayments will detract from subscription sales. But we've already said that micropayments address the audience of people who are willing to pay and trust the content but aren't yet willing to subscribe. In, in a way, it's sort of like a newsstand sale. If I go and I buy a magazine at a newsstand sale, does that detract from getting a subscription? Actually, buying the newsstand copy might lead me to get a subscription. So anyway, if done right, the micropayment scheme needs to open doors rather than closing them. Number three on the publisher side, the publisher needs to get the reader's information. Getting a buck for an article is okay, but the real money is in the relationship. Now, there are a lot of other things to consider about micropayments. For example, might there be differences in age groups? Might they have different attitudes towards paying for content? I don't know. But I think I'm already over time on today's podcast, so I'll leave it there. But if this is an issue that interests you, 
I've done a fair amount of thinking about it. I'd be happy to talk it through with you. Uh, contact me, go to crablegroup.com. You can find my contact information there. And while you're there, consider signing up for the Crable letter and like and share this video, please. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.